Hi, I'm Sarah Becker. This is the small chapel at Northern Seminary. And did you know that Abraham's name was Abram? God changed it to Abraham in Genesis 17. That was after he'd been living in Canaan for quite some time. It was after the first formal covenant agreement with him and God. It was even after his son Ishmael was born, who he had with his wife's servant, Hagar. So he was Abram a lot longer than he was Abraham. I'm glad his name was changed because the song Father Abram just doesn't have the same ring. And that's the first of many facts I'm going to share with you today about names in the Bible. <laughs> Abraham wasn't the only one whose name was changed in the Bible. His wife Sarah used to be Sarai. His grandson Jacob was renamed Israel, which is where the nation and the people got their name. Jacob's son Joseph was given an Egyptian name by the Pharaoh when he was put in charge of food storage and rationing for the upcoming famine. His Egyptian name, Zephnath Paniah. Zephnath Paniah. Try saying that five times fast. I could do it. No, I couldn't. King Solomon was also called Jedediah. Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego are Babylonian names that were given to Hananiah, Mishael, and Azariah when they entered the Babylonian king's service. Daniel was called Belteshazzar. Jesus' disciple Peter was named Simon. Jesus himself gave him the name Peter after his confession that Jesus was the Messiah. Peter means rock, and Jesus said, on this rock I'm going to build my church. This is why sometimes he's called Simon Peter because it's confusing. Joshua was Moses' successor in leading the people. His name was originally Hoshea, which means salvation or save me. Hoshea was changed to Joshua, which means Yahweh or the Lord saves me. That puts the focus more on who is doing the saving. The name started off as Yehoshua, but was then shortened to Joshua because reasons. The Greek version of this name is Jesus. Jacob a.k.a. Israel, had 12 sons who mostly became the ancestors of the 12 tribes of Israel. The firstborn was Reuben, which means, look, a son. It also sounds like the Hebrew for, he has seen my misery. Next comes Simon, or Simeon, which means one who hears. Levi means attached, which puts Levi's genes in a whole new light. Judah means praise. Dan means judge. Naphtali means my struggle. Gad means good fortune. Asher means happy. Issachar sounds like the Hebrew word for reward. Zebulun probably means honor, although there are some other possibilities. Joseph means may he add, which pretty much means give me more. That's really not that subtle. Benjamin means son of my right hand. He was originally named Benoni, which means son of my sorrow. That's the name his mother Rachel gave him, and she died in childbirth. His father Jacob changed his name. If I was Benjamin, I'd be really happy about that. Those are all the sons of Jacob or Israel, but the tribe names changed things up a bit. The descendants of Levi, the Levites, became the tribe of priests, and as such, they weren't given an allotment of land after the conquest. The idea was that you needed priests in every territory, so the Levites pretty much lived everywhere. There are even laws that specifically state that the people are supposed to take care of the Levites that are in their territory because they don't have any land. Joseph's descendants actually made up two tribes, which are named for his two sons, Ephraim and Manasseh. Ephraim means fruitful, and Manasseh means causing to forget. Okay, things get a little crazy now. There were times that God told the prophets what to name their children as another way to communicate with the people, another way to prophesy. Hosea's daughter and his second son were named Lo Ruhana and Lo Ami, which mean not loved and not my people. I mean, I get the whole prophetic communication thing, but I would really hate to be named not loved. I mean, that just doesn't bode well, which I guess is the point. Isaiah's first son was named Shir Jashub, which means a remnant will return. Pretty straightforward meaning there. Isaiah's second son was named, get this, Maher Shalal Hashbaz. And you shall all be very impressed that I said that without looking at my notes. That's the longest name in the Bible, and it means quick to the plunder, swift to the spoil. And I bet that kid hated the first day of school every year. There is actually a guy named Nimrod in the Bible. Genesis 10, 8 through 9 reads, Cush was the father of Nimrod, who became a mighty warrior on the earth. 
He was a mighty hunter before the Lord. That is why it is said, like Nimrod, a mighty hunter before the Lord. The name could possibly mean rebel in Akkadian, but we're really not sure. Because of its description in the Bible, it was adopted into English as another word for hunter. Then Bugs Bunny used it to describe Elmer Fudd, which is how it came to have its current meaning of fool. Gotta love it when Bugs Bunny changes the language. By now you're probably noticing some patterns in these names, and that's because the same prefixes and suffixes were used again and again because of their meanings. El means God, as in Samuel and El Elizabeth. Aya means the Lord, or Yahweh, as in Jeremiah and Obadiah. Our friends Hananiah and Azariah from earlier, Zephaniah, Zechariah, Nehemiah, Isaiah. Aya was very popular. Yahweh, or the Lord, is also the meaning of the prefix Jo or Je, as in Joel or Jehoshaphat, and it's pronounced Jehoshaphat not Jehoshaphat. I don't know where that came from, but it's wrong. Beth means house, so Bethlehem is house of bread, and Bethel is house of God. Bar means son, as in Barnabas, son of encouragement. Using names of gods was actually pretty common in the ancient world. Shadrach and Meshach, who we discussed earlier, have the same ending, Ak, which probably has something to do with the Babylonian god Marduk. Baal, rather uncreatively, means Baal another god. What's really sad is sometimes Baal shows up in Israelite names, which means that was a god they were worshipping, which is bad. The first king of Israel, Saul, his fourth son was named Ishbaal, which means man of Baal. This is usually changed to Ishbosheth, perhaps because pious Israelites and later Jews didn't even want to say the name of the pagan god. Okay, I think we have to speed this up. The names of Jesus' apostles, the twelve, were Peter, also known as Simon, Andrew, Peter's brother, James, brother of John, John, brother of James. These two were also called the sons of Zebedee, their father. Also, they were called the sons of thunder, which I think is pretty cool. There was Philip and Nathaniel, who was also known as Bartholomew. Matthew, who was also known as Levi. Then there was another Simon called Simon the Zealot, which was a radical political party at that time. And there's Thomas, who was also known as Didymus. I'm feeling cheated because I only have one name. There was another James called James, son of Alphaeus. And there was Thaddeus, who was also known as Judas, but he stopped using that name for obvious reasons. The last disciple is Judas Iscariot, who betrayed Jesus. In Acts, a guy named Matthias was chosen to replace Judas, so there were 12 again. So maybe I guess they had a apostle warranty? It's a bonus! There are 39 books in the Bible that are named for people. Two are named for women, Esther and Ruth. Sixteen are named for prophets, but that becomes eighteen if you count the two books of Samuel, which the Jewish Bible does. In the English Bible, we call them history. Seven books were written by one of the twelve apostles, Matthew, John, and Peter. Two books were written by brothers of Jesus, James, not one of the two of the twelve, another James, a lot of Jameses, and Jude, who again was probably named Judas, but abandoned that name. At the end of his letter to the Roman church, Paul mentions, commends, and or greets 27 people by name. Some of those he greets are leaders of house churches made up of unknown numbers of people, who Paul also greets. And then at the end, he adds, and all the Lord's people who are with them. So pretty much if you were a Christian in Rome at the time, Paul greeted you. There are a lot of names in the Bible that when they're translated into English, begin with the letter J, as many as 245 by some counts. These range from the familiar, like Joel and Jonathan and Jared, to the more obscure but still not completely weird sounding in English, Joab, Jubal, Job. And then there's the completely foreign sounding names, like Jehudi, found in Jeremiah 36, and Jehoahaz, who was a king of Judah after King Josiah. Then there's Jeshaiah, Jeshaiah which is a name found in several genealogies in 1 Chronicles, Ezra, and Nehemiah. There's Jehoshabeth, who was the daughter of King Joram of Israel. She's also the one that saved Joash, who would become another king of Judah, from Athaliah when she started killing all the descendants of the recently deceased king Ahaziah. Ahaziah. 
And finally, I give you Jusheb Hesed, which is another First Chronicles genealogy name. And my personal favorite, because it means loving kindness is returned. Thanks for watching. I hope you had some fun, maybe learned some things. If you have a suggestion for a future show, leave it in the comments and we'll get to as many as we can. Until next time, may you always have matching socks. Bye.